MIA, pull up the people. Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman, broadcasting live from Copenhagen. The president of the Maldives, Mohamed Nasheed, has been one of the most outspoken leaders to call attention to the dire consequences of climate change. Eighty percent of the Maldives lies three feet or less above sea level. The predicted rise in sea level caused by global warming could wipe the country off the map. President Nasheed addressed the U.N. climate summit on Wednesday. Developed countries created the climate crisis. Developing countries must not turn into a calamity. Therefore, I invite the leaders of big developing countries to recognize the responsibilities. I urge them to come forward at Copenhagen with quantifiable and verifiable actions to reduce emissions 30 percent below business as usual by 2020. Let me be plain. We urgently need to move forward, giving us intensity targets that are close to business as usual is not acceptable at this stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that you should not ask others to do something you are not prepared to do yourself. The Maldives has pledged to become carbon neutral by 2020. And I have been hugely encouraged by the steps already taken by least developed countries and small island states to begin getting their economies green. At the recent climate of vulnerable forum in Mali, 11 states pledged to raise their ambitions in leading the world towards carbon neutrality. This is an enormous opportunity to reduce future emissions before fossil fuel infrastructure is built. But it cannot be done without the financial support from rich countries. I say to the industrialized world, you have the finances and much of the technology. Please help us go green. When we say this, please be, bear in mind that Climate change negotiations have nothing, nothing at all to do with money. Maldives is a very small state. We have never received aid from European Union countries. Whatever we have been able to do, we have been able to do with our friends and neighbors, and we have been able to fend for ourselves. Climate change negotiations have, for me and for our country, everything to do with our grandchildren. I have two daughters. I want to see grandchildren. If we continue business as usual, we will not be able to see our grandchildren. To assume that Climate change has anything to do with money, in my mind, is the height of arrogance. I am also encouraged by regional climate initiatives. In places like California and Quebec, where true leadership is being shown, outside the realm of the nation state, their standards, their ambitions are much, much higher than the center. Climate change, I do understand, is an issue that transcends nationality, that transcends the nation state. And what we have an offer from the centers, from heads of states, falls far shorter than what we are seeing from sub regions or from provinces and from states. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyoto divided the world. It divided us between rich and poor, developed and developing, NX1 and NX2. Our task now is to unite the world behind the shared vision of low carbon growth. The Maldives is trying to lead the way. I call upon every country in this room to join us, not just for the sake of the Maldives, 
but for the sake of the entire planet. If we are not able to seize this opportunity, and if we are not able to come to an understanding during the course of next 48 hours, I'm afraid we might very well be doomed. I hope that that is not what we are contemplating. Thank you very much. The President of the Maldives, Mohamed Nasheed, speaking here in Copenhagen, addressing the UN Climate Summit on Wednesday. Yes, Mohamed Nasheed, the president, held an underwater news conference of his entire cabinet a few weeks ago. Uh, everyone was there except for a few members who didn't know how to scuba dive. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. It's Climate Countdown. At a news conference earlier today, the prime minister of the island nation of Tuvalu issued an urgent call to ensure that global temperatures do not rise by 1.5 degrees Celsius. Prime Minister Yelemia also highlighted the immense pressure that small island states are coming under to accept a weak deal. He said, quote, under the last few days, we have seen considerable pressure to accept a deal based around two degrees limit. We have not yielded to this pressure because our future is not negotiable. He highlighted pressure from Australia in particular. For more, I'm joined now by the negotiator for Tuvalu, uh, Tukai Kitala. We welcome you to Democracy Now! You've just come out of that news conference. Um, can you talk about, first, what does global warming mean for your country? And locate it for our listeners and viewers in the United States and around the world who may not have even heard of Tuvalu. <clears throat> uh, global warming in Tuvalu, it's, a, it's really an issue at, uh, when we look at things that are happening right now in Tuvalu in regards to sea level rise and also um, really high tides. We experience high tides during the months of February and March. We have been living in, with a lot of doubts that um, the future looks really, really doubtful, the future of Tuvalu. And the Prime Minister actually really stressed out that we are not here in Copenhagen to strike a deal that will jeopardize our survival. <coughs> But it seems that uh, whatever that has been happening around the corridors or behind the scenes has created a lot of uh, unease that now we question our survival. Will Copenhagen come up with a, uh, a real um, deal? Will Copenhagen provide assurance that Tuvalu will have a good future? We might be talking about um, looking, we might be looking at things at the moment, you know, that happening at the moment. The question, the big question is always put forward by Tuvaluans is what is going to happen in the future? We're worried about our new next generation, or our future generations. The, the issue here is that uh, whether our kids will ever enjoy the beautiful sands and the, the millions of corals that we have. How large is the population of Tuvalu? Tuvalu, it's uh, just over 10,000 people in total. And our land is so narrow, this land, um, strips of land that um, they goes, runs long as a, up to five to six kilometers long. And it gets to um, about a kilometer wide. That's the widest point of the island. But it gets really narrow at some point.